Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're continuing our beginner's guide to Crusader Kings 3 with a slightly off the beaten path topic, taking a look at 5 dirty tricks. There are many systems in Crusader Kings 3, and they can often come together in rather insidious ways that aren't always immediately apparent. I'd like to highlight some of these outside the box solutions to problems and open up some opportunities for more clever schemes than the ones that are plainly presented in game. To clarify my intent here, I don't really think of any of these as exploits. They aren't always quick and easy, uh, or even guaranteed to succeed, though when they do, they can make your life a lot easier. In my humble opinion, these can all be used as roleplay seeds for a scheming lord. Pretending to go around, talk to the court members, talk to vassals, plot against your liege lord, things like that. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic as well. For now though, Without any time to waste, let's begin. They'll believe anything. Faith is a complicated matter in Crusader Kings, and as you grow your realm, you'll find yourself eventually having to deal with people who believe in the wrong thing. Demanding the conversion of a vassal is easy enough, though getting them to accept might require a hook, but converting the general public can take forever. Your realm priest can slowly work away at converting one county at a time, but this is a slow and arduous process, taking them away from other important tasks. So instead, take the approach of a true zealot, one who knows how to scheme. Take a look at the territories of a different faith. Find somebody of the same faith as the territories in question, and try and get a hook on them. There are a few ways to do this, but the easiest would be to fabricate a hook, provided you have the truth is relative perk, though a faster option is to imprison them and negotiate their release as a favor, giving you a hook. Then grant them the targeted territory as a title, giving the people a leader they can feel attached to. Seeing a man of their own faith in charge They'll believe that they've become accepted and that their faith is welcome. As commoners, they'll believe anything. The final step is to demand the conversion of this new vassal, using the hook if you have to. Not only will he convert himself, he'll bring any holdings under him of his old faith with him too. Think of it as them redecorating all the temples and telling his people that they were wrong all along. It's very important that the old faiths match. The county will not convert if they don't. This is certainly a tyrannical approach, but if you're enough of a zealot, a godly man can surely justify this in the name of whichever supreme being he serves. Sell your victory. In war, when the leader of a side is imprisoned, the war score gets a plus 100% in favor of the army that captured the enemy leader. This can often happen in battle or at the end of a successful siege, and it can lead to an immediate victory, allowing the winner to enforce their demands as soon as it happens, provided the rest of the war hasn't gone terribly wrong. But why wait for battle? And in fact, why wait for war at all? A true scheming lord would know that the most favorable peace treaties are signed from either side of a jail cell. Get yourself the kidnapper perk from the intrigue lifestyle and scheme the abduction of your target territory's lord. This could be a mere count or a mighty king, but your chances of success will vary based on everything we discussed in our episode about intrigue. Get your spy master to help, try and convince agents to join you, and then patiently wait for the right moment to strike. When your plotters are in place and ready to kidnap your target, send them your declaration of war. Make sure you've actually got a Cassus Belly as you'll still need this to actually declare the war. Wait for the message to be received and for the war to begin, and immediately push for the abductors to get to work. If you're lucky, this scheme will be a success, and you can immediately negotiate the terms of their surrender from the aforementioned either side of a jail cell. Do note that abduction schemes can fail, so be picky about your targets and be prepared to fight a war if the plot does happen to fail. Your land is my land. Sometimes you'll have given some land to a vassal or have pushed somebody else's claim for them to gain land only to later regret the decision. This can be the result of anything, 
Maybe they've gained traits that make them bad at their job. Maybe they've grown to hate you. Maybe they're boring at parties or perhaps a better alternative person has come along and you'd like to give them the title instead. Revoking a title from a vassal is the easiest way to get the title back under your own control, but not only can they take issue with this revocation, if done without reason, it's also seen as an act of tyranny, something that can have far-reaching consequences if you are seen as too much of a tyrant by your vassals. But what if the land was supposed to be yours in the first place? If you send your realm priest out to fabricate a claim on the titles you'd like to revoke, you can later use the fabricated claims to revoke titles without being seen as a tyrant. This has to be done one county title at a time, unless you're lucky and the realm priest somehow manages to get a claim on a duchy title, again something that can happen if they have a high learning skill. You might still have to fight a rebellion as well, by the way. They won't necessarily just give up their title that easily. But, at least you won't have to deal with the repercussions of being seen as a tyrant. After all, the land was rightfully yours to begin with. Me and your army. Being a vassal has some downsides, the biggest one being you're literally serving somebody else. If you aspire to greater things, you will eventually try to climb the ladder and one day become duke, king, or emperor yourself. You might war with your fellow vassals, grow your realm, and eventually declare independence. Then you and your allies would war against your liege and their allies, but chances are your liege has better and more powerful allies than you do, what with your low rank. And chances are that your allies might not even join, or maybe you don't have enough prestige to call them to war in the first place. And besides, being an independent realm isn't the same thing as having your liege's title. So instead, you might opt to get the meritocracy perk and use the claim throne scheme on your liege to get a claim on their primary title. Note, the scheme only gives you a claim on their primary title. So if they have multiple equivalent tier titles, you'll still only have a claim on the one. This is you basically saying that you do a better job than them and that's why you should have their primary title instead. But if you try to push those claims, you'll find yourself in a similar situation as before. Allies pit against allies, potentially to your detriment. Instead, you should use the power of factions. Once you have a claim on your liege's primary title by using the aforementioned claim throne scheme, you can create a faction in support of a claimant. This can always be done for anybody with a claim to your liege's titles. That is, if you'd rather see them in charge. But since you have a claim yourself, you can put yourself forward as the ideal candidate. If you have a strong hook on people, you can force them to join, but they will automatically join if they either like you a lot, hate their liege a lot, and they aren't either terrified of them, their friend, lover, prisoner, ally, or caught up in a strong hook from their liege. So you should either try to get a strong hook on these people, or try to improve your relations with them by any means necessary. It helps if the liege is disliked as well, and sometimes you might opt to scheme the murder of a popular liege to have them replaced by a less liked successor. Eventually, with enough support, you're able to push your demands, letting your liege know that you'll be having his primary title now. And when he asks you and whose army, you can say back me and your army as you push for a war with all of the faction members providing their armies to you where they previously would have provided them to your target. This is a one-two punch. You haven't just given yourself supporters in the war, but you've taken them away from your liege. Once the war is done, their primary title is yours and you've climbed up one step in the ladder. Love them like a son. To finish things off with a classic, we turn to the art of war, where Sun Tzu says, Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look upon them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. When you have somebody that causes you trouble and can't be imprisoned or murdered for some reason or another, the best thing you can do is treat them like a son. Specifically, like Denethor treated Faramir. Yep, take a lesson from Lord of the Rings. Give the problematic individual command of a small task force and send them out on a vital mission. Maybe you told them it was a routine scouting mission, or maybe you're giving them a chance to impress you. Whichever it is, put them in charge of a pitiful army, and 
even band them together with others you want to see taken care of if there are some knights that need removing. Then send them off to face the enemy. Now be warned, they might just get imprisoned, and even if you don't pay ransom to get them back, they might return with a hook, making them a potential threat. So make sure you commit to your hatred. If they come back, send them once more to battle against the odds. Eventually, the job will get done. So there you have it, folks. Five things you can do in Crusader Kings 3 that are dirtier than being an incestuous cannibal. Do you have any clever ideas or tricks of your own? Any thoughts on how these can be further tuned? Have you had any success stories you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments down below. I am very curious to see other ways that Crusader Kings 3 can be pushed beyond its limits. And make sure you check out the rest of this guide series linked in the description down below as well for more normal pointers about how to play Crusader Kings 3. And if you have any topic requests, feel free to drop them down below as well. And as always, make sure you subscribe for more Crusader Kings 3 and strategy gaming content. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.